Next up, I'm Dave TMPSG, and in this video, I answer the question, when your woman thinks you're dumb. Welcome to Man Up, episode 182. Masculinity for the intelligent man. I'm David Tien, PhD, and this is Man Up! Hi, I'm David Tan, PhD, and for over the past 10 years, I've been helping hundreds of thousands of people in over 87 countries attain success, happiness, and fulfillment in life and love. And here I am in Bali uh, on the uh, balcony of uh, our suite here at the W. Um, it was raining a little bit earlier, um, but the sun is setting. It's not too bad right now. Uh, usually it's like this pinkish hue, but I like how there's some blue still in the sky and you can see the colors changing. And uh, what's really nice is waking up to the sound of the ocean, or in fact, sleeping to the sound of the ocean. You can hear it from inside the room. Okay, so got a question here from the Private Man Up Facebook group, and this one comes from Francis. So if you haven't joined the group, click the link, join the group, see you inside there. Francis asked a very long question, and the challenge for me right now is trying to summarize it um, for you. I'm not going to read out the whole thing, but I'm just going to get started reading it out and see how we do. So, hey David, I really appreciate all the videos you have posted and it has made me think and reflect on how to improve myself. Awesome. Great to hear. Um, I have a question for you and for all the men, up, men out there. Okay, so he is engaged um, and uh, the things that concern me is that his, his fiance has a tendency to outstart, outsmart him and do things more efficiently than he does. I really do appreciate all the help that she has given me, but when I don't do things that um, as quickly or as efficient, uh, efficiently as she would like, she thinks that I'm wasting time or that I'm too slow of a person. Okay, so he says he's trying really hard. He's trying to pick things up quickly. He's trying to be smarter and uh, be more efficient. Um, but um, she's three years younger than him. But um, but uh, and when she, she when she was younger, she had to work um, in uh, work as a teenager, helping her parents out, opening up restaurants. Um, so she had to learn a lot about about the business side of things, much more than he did. And he says he led a relatively average um, teenage lifestyle in the U.S., um, just like having fun on the weekends and doing homework and that sort of thing. So he's more sheltered um, than she is, he says, uh, and she had to grow up faster um, and experience life and matured faster. Also, I would add that she's a female and usually in their 20s, even up until the 20s, females still generally mature faster than men do, especially in sheltered environments like um, middle-class America. Okay, so, um, and he says she never really got to live life like a regular teenager. Fast forward years later, they met through an online dating website in New York. I didn't mean to laugh there, but I did. Okay, so um, she always had that push forward, work hard, think quickly mentality. However, be, however before meeting her, um, he was in a good position in his life where he had a stable job and had his own place to live. Part of the struggles that he had before was suffered from low self-esteem. Um, he wanted others to love him and, and have confidence in him, even when he didn't have confidence in himself. As a result, it forced him to start off on not such good footing with his career. Okay, anyway, let's fast forward through this. Um, okay, so uh, two and a half years ago, he met her uh, and he believed her to be the girl of his dreams, the woman he's planning to marry. Uh, when we fight, he says, it's been mainly about a few things. The fact that I'm not, so she's bugging him about these things. She's picking fights with him on these facts or on these points. Uh, the fact that I'm not making enough money, she makes more than him. I'm not as good as a problem, as much, I'm not as good as, as being a problem solver as she is. Plus she made some valid points as to why she can solve some issues better. I'm an occasional slow talker because the right words don't always come out of my mouth, which drives her crazy, not in a good way. And I'm the one that tends to make more stupid mistakes compared to her. Therefore, it makes her feel like she can't rely on me as a future husband. Okay, um, she's mild. she mildly jokes about this. Um, it's, she says, uh, just be smarter, uh, don't make stupid mistakes. And then his question is, what are some suggestions you would take to help me improve myself or ways to help her believe she's not marrying an intellectually dumb person? Okay, so um, Jer uh, a guy in the group, Jeremy, who usually gives pretty good advice, asked him a bunch of questions, and his answers to those questions were quite illuminating. And uh, his answers to those questions are, um, okay, so uh, let me see if I can, again, a very long, see if I can summarize this. Um, she's usually the one that brings up the money issue when, we're originally, when we originally got together, I was behind on finances, um, 
and uh, do, 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 do. he's not in debt anymore, but when she gets pushy about how much or how little money I spend, I start to get defensive. Okay. She has said that she can't rely on me on multiple occasions, not just during our engagement. Most of the times it's because I screwed something up and she gets upset when I make mistakes, especially when she sees me making the mistake. When she's joking, I get the feeling that there's some shade of truth behind it. Of course, there's a shade of truth behind it. She will say something like, I wish I was with someone that makes more money, or I wish you didn't have these problems in a mild and lighthearted manner. That's pretty mean, actually. Uh, because she's joking about it, you can't actually retort or uh, respond seriously. That's that's why it's actually quite devious. Um, so she can, she can always say, well, I was just joking. Why are you taking this so seriously? Um, when obviously she's being passive aggressive here. In our arguments, we don't connect right away because I spend too much time trying to figure out how to resolve the issue. This is a, a normal uh, male failing. And I become quiet for a little bit and then try to talk in a, in a way that would try to calm her down. So you end up having to manage her feelings. <laughs> when our fights happen, you're right, I do have the sense of insecurity. Sometimes I will speak my mind and it will get me into a bit of trouble. Speaking your mind should never get you into a bit of trouble, except that you also are passive aggressive. You're holding it back, holding it back, trying to be better. And then when you finally get the courage to speak to her, bam, it comes out probably out of control with some bitterness and that gets you into trouble. And when I'm not giving her the words of affirmation that she's looking for, she says that I don't know how to make her feel better. Okay, now she wants you to make her feel better as well. I don't say that I'll become smarter or make more money, but I will say something like, I understand where you're coming from, and I will make improvements based on things that I can control. When we're not fighting about my finances, we're fighting because we are either not thinking on the same page or because I made mistakes when the issues are relatively simple to take care of. Okay, I asked two more questions as a result of this. Um, I asked him about his mother, and um, I asked him about whether he was raised by strict parents. So his answers were, um, as a teenager, my relationship with my mother was stable, I wasn't rebellious, he says, obviously, and I'll say why it's obvious to those who, for whom it is not obvious, like Francis, um, later on, just in a second. Um, but I was very obedient uh, to whatever my mom asked me, gee, you think, uh, to do when it came to helping out around the house. I did it without questioning. I didn't have any quality conversations with her. She told me, you know, a normal Asian parent, she told me things to not do so that I can be a good kid. I had very good grades, um, but then struggled with my grades when I got into college. As a teenager, the bottom line for my parents was that it was either I get good grades or I was grounded. Okay, So I studied well enough to get the good grades. Also, I was raised by Chinese parents with Christian mindset, so not really the conventional Chinese upbringing. I, I would argue that the opposite, um, the Christian mindset is the traditional Chinese upbringing. Both are conservative and hard on people. Um, in addition, I did not have any older siblings, just a younger brother who was seven years younger. Okay, um, Okay, great. He's curious as to what as to uh, where the questions are going here. Um, okay, so I think it's quite obvious for, hopefully for those who are more mature in the Man Up group, and for those who are watching, to be uh, for those who are more mature. Um, obviously, Francis um, is the type of person who at this age in his life, this stage in his life, I, I'm assuming you're late 20s um, or older, um, are used to being bullied. You're used to being verbally abused. You're used to people telling you you're dumb, you're not good enough, work harder, think harder, be smarter. You're used to getting that. That's why when you get it from somebody like that, you don't feel disrespected, you don't feel slighted, you don't feel like that was rude, you don't feel like, what the fuck is, what? you don't feel like there are other things about you that are good, that are valuable, that are worth loving, and instead you beat yourself down. So the only way you would accept this behavior from a fiance is, I mean, a fiance means somebody who's really close to you, who you have now entered into a bargain, into a contract, that you will spend the rest of your lives together. That's about as close as it gets. So you have accepted into your life a fiance who, basically, so who is abusing you verbally. The only way that you would put up with this, and not just put up with it, but embrace it, is without the thought of where the fuck are you coming off getting on, you know, saying this sort of thing to me? Why don't you appreciate these lovable qualities about me, my kindness, my compassion? That's one of those things that have been recurring over and over in these videos, guys asking questions from a very Nazi viewpoint, Nazi as in, um, people, guys who uh, look at the world as uh, based on money and, and, and like status success and basic shit like that. How smart you are, how fast you are, how strong you are, um, how, you know, the, how smart, how much money you have, basic things that are like super Official shit um, instead of goodness, compassion, kindness, um, love, uh, you know, how good they are to people, moral 
issues, and instead it's, it's amoral issues. You, could, you might as well be not a, or Hitler, because Hitler was smart, he was powerful, he had money, and he, well, if he wasn't physically fit himself, he was in control of a fucking army. So deal with that, right? So like on, on that score, Hitler wins. Hitler's better than you are um, on that score. But none of you guys give a shit about compassion or goodness, and that's why you suck. And that's why David Tian says, fuck you. Even though David Tian says, I love you too for joining the group, and thank you very much. But David Tian says, fuck you, because you're basically Nazis. But you don't know that you're Nazis yet, because that's America is basically Nazi world. They, they, they just won't admit it. They think they're the good guys. Well, really, yeah, they're pretty much the same. They just won the war. But it's not as bad because they're not racist. That's pretty much it. And they, 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 because of, they won't champion subhumans, which is awesome. Okay, so, but I think nowadays we're far enough away from emancipation and things like that, where that debate no longer happens, plus recent events have made this debate going back to the old meritocracy of superficial metrics. And so Francis being used to being beaten down on superficial metrics. He's, been, he's used to being told you're not smart enough, so work harder. Um, you're too slow. You're too inefficient. So it's your fault. It's your fault. And there's no good in you except for this. And you're used to taking that shit. Well, look, <laughs> obviously there's a pattern here. And obviously you must have been taking this for years for it to not even occur to you that this is that this is actually not just disrespectful, and I, I did a whole other video on disrespect, right? But also to realize that this is no basis for, there's no love in this relationship. She's looking down on you, she's spitting on you, <laughs> maybe even physically you may not know it, know, notice this, but it will just get worse. Bullies get more empowered the more you the more you give in. And here you are saying, she's saying, you're stupid, okay? And you're taking it and you're like, how can I be less stupid? That's the wrong approach. Fuck stupid, that's a label that's completely useless. Tell me what I did wrong and I will correct it in the future. There is no reason to continue the bullying beyond that. And if it is that important to her, then tell her to fuck up, fucking man up or woman up and find a new man. Because clearly the things that he has, Francis, the things that you have and the value that you present currently in your life right now, which are just as good as being smart. Okay, because Hitler was fucking smart. So it's just as good as being smart. The value that you have in your life right now, she doesn't value that. So she's with you for other neurotic reasons, for her own fucking uh, hair, her, for her own background. You're with her for, for neurotic reasons from your own upbringing. I went to your parents, and it seems like th the pattern is quite evident. You were not a rebel. You didn't say, fuck you, mom. <laughs> right? You were more like, okay, mom, I'm going to try really hard and get good grades because that's the only reason, that's the only way you will not ground me, and, and that's the only way I can get your approval. Yeah, you're pretty fucking used to this. Most Asians are. You know how easy it is for a guy like myself to fucking bully an Asian guy? All I gotta do is just like shame the shit out of him for being stupid. It's so easy. I don't even mean to do it and it happens. I just say, dude, what were you thinking? And blah, he just, his eyes go blank and he really has no retort. I literally want to know what you were thinking. It's not like I'm shaming you. I want to know what you're thinking because only when I see your work, so to speak, it's like math, I need to see your work, only then can I know where you went wrong in your reasoning. But so many guys, I notice when I ask them, what were you thinking? think that's a fucking insult and they shut down and I'm like okay that must have been a way that your parents or teachers shamed you as a child but I'm actually asking it for, for, for real reasons for, for information that I need um, but this is just another sign of shame so Francis you may not know this you probably don't you don't know this I know you don't know this now you do but before you didn't you and your in your siblings and all of your friends I would say most of your friends safely I can say most of your friends are suffering the same fucking thing where they got beaten down, verbally abused, as children, as teenagers, um, by, by schools. Probably this is in the context of school, teachers, parents, because this has to do with your intelligence, right? So um, you're so used to this that you fall into a pattern. This is called reenactment. Um, it's called repetition compulsion. You're, you're, you're compelled to seek out that dynamic, the relationship dynamic that you're used to. This is the one. And so it feels so comfortable for you to be in a relationship with somebody who looks down on you for your intellect and, and tells you to be smarter and you work really, really hard to be smarter because that's, by the way, the dialogue that's already occurring inside your head. That's the only way you would accept it and that it would feel comfortable for you like this, for you to put up with it and not just for you to put up with it, but for you to embrace it and propose to it. That's the only fucking way because this is your neurosis. So what you have to do here is if you want to, unless you want to have a completely a completely disastrous relationship in marriage and then fuck up your kids because their kids are going to repeat the same pattern. They're going to see their daddy getting bullied and verbally abused by mommy and they'll think that's normal. And then they'll either take the mommy's role or the daddy's role in their relationship and you're going to fuck up your kids. So unless you want to do this, okay, what you need to do is 
sit down with her and say, right now, I don't think you and I are a good match. You clearly want something more uh, or different, I should say, from me, from myself, and I want, I need something different. And I know it's really hard. That's going to be the hardest part, but you got to start there. And then what you got to do is go into therapy. Okay, you got to go into counseling to explore why you have so much shame that you can put up with this kind of treatment of yourself without questioning it, without it bridling your I mean, what's the word? Uh, without it bugging you, um, and 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 you can start with invincible. That'll get you at least your balls back. All right. So I've I've said that many times in these videos. You got to get your balls back, Francis. I think your balls are so far up your ass. I, I think you've lost them. So invincible would help, but I think that advice already is too hard for you. So just before you get your balls back, just break off. Break off. I mean, I guess it's going to take balls for you to do that. Fuck. But. You're not going to get your balls in this relationship. They're, they're already gone. You probably don't even know where they are. But once you can get, get away from her, the balls will start to grow back, okay? And the best way to do that is to go to Invincible. I know it's a plug for my own thing. What can I say? I mean, I'm proud of it. It's an awesome program. But in addition to that, the long-term growth will have to come through therapeutic coaching and therapeutic counseling. So Invincible is a good start. It's a great jump start to kickstart that growth process, um, growth literally of, you know, of your manhood. Um, but also really what you're looking at is you need to get back to your shame issues and start processing where that came from and then grow out of that. And that means that you got to go back to those trauma points and emotionally confront them. Um, I have for future programs uh, that are coming out as of this point of the filming, coming out pretty soon, um, but aren't out yet. Uh, but Invincible is always the best starting point, at the moment anyway, and I especially recommend it for you. So a quick plug for my program, but um, you know, I would say any kind of uh, a good counselor or a good therapist um, would be a great way to go on this. Um, of course, that would be like 200 bucks an hour or something like that. If you can't afford it every week, maybe your employer can cover it um, or subsidize it. But if you can't afford it, uh, you can probably do it like once a month or something. In which case, you really need to get invincible if you're only going to counseling once a month. But once a week counseling, I highly recommend. So there you go, Francis. Um, and for the guys who are watching, let me do a recap. If your wife or fiance or girlfriend keeps putting you down, uh, and she is obviously not happy with the way you currently are. I mean, we're never 100% happy with any with, with the, our partners. There's, that's just the, that's just life. But we have to accept the way they are now. I mean, we prefer maybe if they change, but we have to accept the way they are now. We do not require them to change. Otherwise, stop that relationship. It will not succeed. So if you only enter, you should only enter a relationship with someone that you can accept 100% of the way they are now. And maybe hope that they would change down the road, but you have to 100% accept the way they are now and be willing to live with them the way they are now. If she is continuing to beat you down and verbally abuse you this way, you will just, I mean, she, you've already put up with so much, right? So it, your balls are already gone. Um, so, so, so you got to break that off. If you find, if you guys, if you find this happening to you, the, the bigger issue is how have you been putting up with this for so long? What is it in your past that has enabled you to feel so comfortable with this dynamic of being beaten down of being bullied of being verbally bullied and abused that you would consider this to be a normal thing that you would even propose to it? Okay. That's the bigger question. Um, so that's the advice on Francis. Uh, long question. Um, sorry if my head was down reading it so much, but um, thank you very much, Francis, for sharing so much and opening up. Um, and I hope that this really helps you. Uh, it's a tough message. I get the benefit of being able to deliver it like this, but I know it's actually a really tough message. Um, it's, it's really tough to hear. So we're here for you um, to help you along that journey of getting your balls back and becoming happier and fulfilled and a whole person again um, and, and uncovering your true self. So there you go. Uh, join the private Facebook group. Click the link. Join the group. I'll see you inside the group. Um, until then, I'm going to catch the sunset, uh, the rest of it, um, and get some food. Um, until then, David Tian signing out. Man up! <laughs>